Yeah, so, you know, it was like a usual Tuesday night for me, just like roughing some people up in the parking lot. I thought it was like a good story to tell for the podcast. Is that right? Josh, is that our new shirt? Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Oh, my God. Where can you where can you get that? You can get it by clicking uh, the link in the description below. The link in the Duh. description below. Classic. Yeah, but I don't, I don't want to like pitch stuff the whole episode. I was actually thinking of taking my shirt off since we're re reviewing uh, Fist of the North Star. If you guys are cool with that, I just want to make sure you're comfortable. I would much prefer if you didn't do I'm that. I'm going to do it. No, I mean, who are you? Why do you? Why would you think it. you have to? I've been working out, and uh, I think I got the body for it. So, just give me a second; it'll be quick. <laughs> oh my God, you have no nipples! <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Volume One, the Anime and Manga Podcast where we review the first volume of a brand new manga each week. My name is Josh Kenshiro Michaels. And today, as always, I am joined by... Megan the... Bullet Bouncing Perrine. Okay, all right. Uh, Cody Big Dipper Decker. <laughs> that was really good, Cody. Wow. That was fantastic. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of good. Volume 1. Today, we are going to be discussing Fist of the North Star. Um, it's so amazing to, to, to dive deep into the history of this series um, and just discover how many things it's inspired, how many things um, you know were inspired by it, and it was inspired by, actually. And just, um, you know what a powerhouse this series is and kind of still is, you know, um, I'm excited to talk about this series with you guys uh, because we've talked about Berserk and Miura has, uh, has uh, talked about being directly uh, inspired by Fist of the North Star has actually gone on to collaborate with, um, with uh, one of the writers and they have their own manga that they created as well. I mean, uh, it goes way back. And I have some questions I want to ask you. I also can't wait to talk about this series. But before we do, uh, we got to remind you about our live show. It's coming up this Saturday, as of uh, or Sunday, this Sunday. Thank you guys. Uh, at Ooh. one o'clock, uh, you're not going to want to miss it. Food wars. We're going to be eating some hot stuff. Uh, it's going to be fun. You're going to want to be there. Um, and I got to say too, we're going to talk about some stuff up top. Um, but if you want to skip ahead to any part of the video, there was going to be some chapters that you can click down below in the description to do that. Um, and yeah, you're going to want to stay to the end for our Wonder Circle, where we're going to read some of your comments. But I want to know what this series means to you guys um, and and sort of what you expected going into it, especially just off this like this badass like heavy metal cover. What did you guys expect and think going into this series? Um, well, I knew that Mira was influenced by this and reading it, I obviously can totally see resemblances between guts and this character so <laughs> i was pretty happy I mean, yeah, um I bet you were. yeah but i i bought this actually and it's really nice hardcover barnes and noble gotta have it mm. and some of the pages are colored which is really cool and i would highly recommend picking this up because it is a really good first volume overall and i would say it's a must have in the collection yeah someone in the comics suggested that i get the hardcover but instead i decided to get a hard body you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of hard to look at you like this. Okay. Cody, <laughs> what did you expect? Um, all I, yeah, I just knew that like, oh, Berserk was inspired by this. And I liked the idea of going down a chain of yeah. inspiration so that we get to the, the, the original story. Yeah. Um, yeah. And all I, I just know this has been referenced in, you know, um, Fallout games. Mm. Fist of the North Rar mm. is a weapon you can get. <gasps> well, that's um, because Fallout is inspired by also Mad Max. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's so crazy what this thing has, how, like how many people it's affected, but also like Mira aside, Jojo heavily mm -hmm. inspired. I mean, if you look at the some poses. of the, the poses, the art, the fighting, I mean, and you hold them side the panel side by side. I mean, at, at a certain point, it would be hard for an untrained eye to tell the difference between like who drew what, because I mean, they're so similar um, and the art does still hold up by I keep going back to when I was reading this, you know, because there is an anime adaptation. There's been multiple, multiple anime adaptations. There's been yeah. video games. There's been live action adaptations when it was tried to, uh, when they tried to bring it over to the West. But I keep going back to what you said in our Berserk reaction video that um, for as old as the original manga or anime series is and how hard it might be to watch, like the manga and the art like holds up, man. It is so, so good. And you could definitely see how it inspired Mira too, but man, I mean, this was like a, a a breeze and a joy to experience today. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was uh there's nothing that is aged to this story about like for me. Mm-hmm. Like this, this there's nothing that feels like oh that's like old and overused. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um I saw like 2 seconds of the anime I'm like oh yeah, all the lining just gets lost when it's animated. Yeah, there's that famous meme that comes from the anime that you're already dead uh or I think he says like oh my wa and then it's just like Shinderu. Shinderu. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my wa Shinderu. And- Nani? And I looked at, boy, I looked at that live action um, Western adaptation too. And if you thought Dragon Ball Evolution was bad, if you thought that Avatar The Last Airbender was bad, I mean, this is the worst. I mean, it was so bad, this adaptation. Um, But I mean, they were trying to bring it over to the West and they've tried multiple times, but with little to no avail have they had success with it. And I think, you know, it is important. And what I kind of want to ask you guys up top, and we'll we'll get to reviewing the series and then we'll get to more of our final thoughts at the end. But um, I wrote down a question I want to pose to people watching to leave in the comments and to you guys right now. Um, because this paved the way, it really did pave the way for things like Dragon Ball, which in turn, you know, paved the way for things like Naruto, which was my introduction into anime and manga. And because it was inspired by Mad Max and Bruce Lee and just like, the the creative lineage of of all of these these things my question to you guys is like how interested are you in where things you love come from because i think there might be a lot of people watching and listening who might really um love certain series that they don't even know was inspired by this and how important is that to know to you guys um i'm going down uh chains lately That's yeah i mean i'm in the my quarter life crisis is trying to figure out like ev- everything i like I'm like looking up interviews with the author and I'm like, well, I based mm-hmm. that I was inspired off of this and I'm going down and like with books, I'm like reading it, which I'm like, oh, some of them, they're not better than the things that I like. Yeah. Um, but I do, I'm like, oh, well I can see how this guy saw that and took it. And it's just interesting seeing how like stories are like, a, like taken and like that inspires someone to write a story and you can see the inspiration. Uh, yeah. I and love it. it. It's, it's, it's a fun, like additional way of like, uh, enjoying any medium for me yeah yeah it's like the inside of the creator's mind and it's just something that you enjoy so much and like take in and like i mean some things you really take to heart and you're like oh my gosh they like that thing so why mm. wouldn't i like that thing too and yeah. it is fun when you get to see like when i get to read this character and obviously him and guts have differences but they they just feel like one in the same and i really do enjoy being like oh this is actually this is a direct representation of that and it is fun to see how yeah. that I, uh, got created and when uh when we saw that the proto first chapter yeah. of berserk that that now like part of the fun is i'm definitely like oh yeah like that was definitely way more inspired mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. by this and that and then it like oh and that's another fun thing like so you like saw that and was like okay let me like make it even more of my own yeah. yeah yeah exactly you make they make it more of their own and they and they take it to a new level and um you know like they say that you they you said that they collaborated which is even more cool to have someone that you respect yeah to to like hear you out and like oh let's coll- like that's such a yeah, crazy it's feeling same thing with urasawa and uh-huh. the creator of astro boy even though that was after he had passed but like through his like family he was able to work on that series mm-hmm. and you know there is like because there are series that we talk about and i'll save this part of the conversation more towards the end of the episode but because i want to go through it but um you know there is this conversation around and there's this beautiful ted talk about like stealing like an artist right like a lot of people think that you know everything that you create has to be original but it really doesn't nothing is original like nothing is original creativity builds on all the things that came before it right and so what i think is so interesting is to see this creative lineage of everything that that was inspired by the works that that you love i mean to at least look back and be able to like gain a new respect and and learn a little bit about it to me is one of my favorite things about manga and anime it's also this interesting thing where it's like this was inspired by Mad Max, which is crazy to me because yes. I, I, as, I assume like this must the have been the opposite. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is interesting that like, oh, there's like cultural exchanges of like storytelling mm. going on. And I, I don't, that's like fun to me that like, oh, like this got inspired by that. And then like, you know, down the road, Berserk inspired something that happened in America. And uh, I like I, it's it's definitely like a way of uniting the world i mean it really kind of is beautiful because you think without mad max you know if you really kind of like break it down you can say like without mad max (laughs) like this wouldn't exist and without this like berserk wouldn't exist and you know it might exist but not in the way that we know and love it today and so i just think it's so incredibly interesting but i have some more questions and stuff i want to get to but we can save it for later it's just weird how not old these stories are too right Yeah. yeah or that they feel at least they don't feel old at all 
And to know that they, you know, have paved the way for so many other things because there wasn't a lot of muscle bound, like, or exaggerated physiques in manga really until this, there were, you know, cases of it, but not to this degree. And so to see that, like, yes, this paved the way for even Dragon Ball and stuff and, and Jojo and Berserk, of course, of course, but like, it's just, it's just amazing. It's amazing. Um, so a little bit of the synopsis, just in case you don't know anything about Fist of the North Star, uh, and you should you should read it by the way because um, there are multiple adaptations. But from what I can gather, they kind of they they're kind of all over the place. Like the the original covers the the manga, it changes some things here and there. It's not as violent, um, but then there are you know later adaptations that cover later arcs, and there's just there's just so many. It's it's easy. I'm I'm imagining to to get to jump in at the wrong point, and this. This manga does not feel like it's aged at all, so I would recommend reading it. But the synopsis, in case you're wondering, is this is a simple one that I pulled. The heir to a special set of martial arts secrets battles dictators in a post-apocalyptic future. Simple. Um, and yeah, how did you guys feel about our, our, our protagonist, our hero, Ken? I, uh, <laughs> I mean, this was in the 80s. Uh, oh, yeah. So I, I mean, you can hear the synth music playing. Oh, this. yeah. This felt, yeah. I mean, the whole story felt like the climax of a Mad Max movie. And to see the first couple of panels, the first couple of panels. And, and like, I had the same experience you did, Cody, like, oh, this is where <laughs> Mad Max got it from. But it was the other way around. And it didn't always start that way either. And that's the interesting because Mad Max was not like the badass tough guy. Mm -hmm. He was like struggling to survive. That, that was that story. And mm -hmm. usually it's the other people that were like the fighters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, it, so that's always like it's already different on that note. Like Mad Max gained a reputation, mm -hmm. but he was just some guy. Yeah. Which was the point. And if you look at not only the world, but like I saw still images of like Mel Gibson next to uh, Kinshiro in his even in his leather uh, jacket. I mean, it's it's the 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 outfits, mm -hmm. the setting. I mean, it's so it, inspired. It's also funny that just remembering that Mad Max, the world was not a nuclear apocalypse. That's just what Australia looked like. But <laughs> oh, everyone right. was just like, oh, it's so like nuclear. Like later on, nuclear war happened, but it, it was a gas shortage. Oh. But like this starts with a nuclear war. Yeah. In the background. Yeah. What a kind of what that's kind of insulting to Australia, huh? Well, it's a yeah. huge desert. <laughs> it was a prison. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but it didn't always start as this either. It started as like a one shot um of this same character, but in high school. And he was like a high school. And it felt <laughs> that's that's one of those crazy things hearing that. He's yeah. like a greaser. He's like, hey, oh. what's up? Well, it felt you guys remember when we talked about Baki the grappler, mm -hmm. if and and Kenichi the mightiest disciple like it felt very similar to that because uh, he was also in high school too mm. and just young and just powerful and strong and very muscular uh, at least in the case of Baki the grappler yeah a, a tough character in a post-apocalypse is a completely different feeling than a tough character in like a high school setting mm, yeah 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 it, it, it's not so much a, oh okay so he is tough versus like oh i assume some bad stuff happened to this mm. guy well yeah and that's the bad stuff is where i really see the berserk influence <laughs> you know that whole first mini arc because it is only a couple chapters is crazy the, yeah i like that it was like oh normally this would probably you know in other stories this is like the thing that it builds up to it's yeah like the whole thing felt like the climax of a story that like i just didn't see the prologue of yeah, yeah. i was like is this happening are we doing it now? now? I know. Because I, I would have thought it would have been because he struggles to get there, mm -hmm. but then he's just kind of there. And I, I was just blown away at how fast it all happened. Yeah, it's one of those things that impresses me in writing when they do like the, the climax of a story, like right off the bat. And I'm like, well, well where are you going to go from here? Because mm -hmm. we just started. And that's, that, that, that's one of those things where I'm like, all right, like mm -hmm. I have to like respect that already. And this is, there's going to be no spoilers for anything past volume one, but. I did like look into where the story goes after volume one and I'm impressed. I'm so impressed and, and blown away at where, where it goes. Um, yeah, I mean, it was already like the marks on his chest and then the, you, you see why I'm like, Oh, like where are you? I'm already finding everything out straight away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but we do see him and um, this is, this is our main character and he is very proficient in the art of, I don't want to get this wrong. The um, North star. It's the North star, but it's uh. Uh, Hokuto Shin Shinken. Mm -hmm. um, Hokuto, and then there's Nanto, which we get to. Yeah. There's two different. And it translates to like North Constellation mm -hmm, or something mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, I saw them like, there's no way that equates the North Star. Oh, yeah, dude. But language is so weird to me. It really is. What do they call it? The, the study of it? It starts with a V, right? 
vernacular? S- not vernacular, but like the study of like language over time. Um, oh, I don't know. Yeah, leave it. Leave it in the comments. Um, Megan, do you? Um, but yeah, he is. He's he's sort of roaming the the post apocalyptic wasteland, and he gets um he gets captured and put in this is this prison. And we see like these Mad Max Mohawk yeah, guys. I literally wrote, Oh, so we already Mad Max and already, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the Z, the Z and the six six six, and they're all like ah. That's one of those fun things because Mad Max had such a low budget, they had to just be like like it was kind of like what a scavenger the scavenger logic, like what do we have to like wear in that mm-hmm. that and like because of that because of a low budget, it developed this like iconic like yeah. outfit that now like I'm seeing like turned into this and it's yeah, it's crazy. Like if they, you know, it is that that thing. Or if you go back in time enough, why did they dress like that in apocalypses? They couldn't afford uh, to dress like anything else. Yeah, that's yeah, you find it off of tattered bodies mm-hmm. and whatever you can find. Yeah, that's what makes me think. You know, causality is is real. <sighs> you know, and the God Hand um, really does have a plan. The God Fist of the North. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. And we're North back. Um, he's in a he's in a uh, he gets put in a prison by a, a village, and he's in there with. Isidro from Berserk, mm-hmm. basically, um, who is a character named Bats. He's he's worse though. He is worse uh, in I mean, terms not... of like his like morals. Yeah, yeah, and his the way he is living his life. Yeah, which yeah, there was a kid sidekick in Mad Max who was uh, was the whole thing was like he's no, like this is the, it was like oh kids who are growing up in the apocalypse are going to be crazy. Yeah, and yeah. assholes. Yeah, well, just yeah, because yeah. they have yeah, to. Be. I mean, yeah, you grow up in a world without morals, you're not gonna. They're just. So you, that's what Mad Max was starting to explore is like what the next generation is going to be like. Mm-hmm. He that's, even says yeah. that too. He's just like, yeah, kids really don't have childhoods anymore. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and, you know, this was sort of a weird thing to see, but we see once he gets thrown into the cell, like a very young girl um, come up to <laughs> so the cute. cell and give him a glass of water um, that that this bat character um i think his name is uh bat yeah slaps out of his hand and uh that's where it's this like beautiful moment um for us to to find out like what kind of person kentro is he's like you know if we take the keys which she has by the way which that's where i was like okay well don't give the give the little girl water but don't give her the keys man these guys will do anything to get out of here um uh you know he says if if we take the keys like what do you think is going to happen to her what do you think they're going to do to her um and so you're let in on the fact very early that he is tough he's muscular but he is um a very good guy yeah the, yeah. the shining star in a in a in a in a sea of darkness and in the valley and we can, uh, we can live like Jack and Sally. Uh, okay. If and you, you lost want. Me. No, we lo- you lost me. <laughs> and you could always find me. <laughs> and we'll have right. Halloween on Christmas. Christmas. We just got copyrighted right now. But I do like um, her. She's so cute. That little, he's like, aren't you going to get in trouble for this? And she does a little like, tee She's like, with her tongue out. She's yeah. so adorable. Yeah, because she comes back with food and water yeah. for him. And I, you know, the translation I, I read, and I think even in the, in the translation that you read, her name is Rin, but there are, you know, people online who refer to her as Lynn. And, and I guess she's been translated. It's been translated. I think it was Rin. I it's, think it is Rin. It's, it's Rin um, for sure in the version I read. And then I've I've seen multiple people say Lynn. Um, we'll just call Rin. her girl. Well, Rin. I'm going to call her Rin because that's how I read it. Um, and, Rin gets some water. That's and her she, name. Yeah, and she is so cute, man. I know. Mm-hmm. She's so cute. And adorable. I, I just love how he draws female care. I mean, all the characters in it's general, the, but the, the shoujo eyes. eyes, the classic mm-hmm. 80s eyes. They just look so gorgeous. There's like something about the nose is like, that's eight, that's like 80s and 90s. The, and, yeah, and the eyes too just really capture that time. And <laughs> I mean, that shot where uh, I feel alive again. I know, I know. Like, that's from eggs. <laughs> I'm a sucker for the eyebrows too, man. Yeah, he's 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 a, a handsome guy, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. So we're in the jail cell, jail jail cell. <laughs> there we um, go. The jail cell. Uh, jail cell. Cody's sale. little accent like brought we're it out. Jail of jail cell. We were down in the jail cell. Yeah, we were down there, and um, we saw Ken. And, and then, then Ken <laughs> comes over, and you know Ken when Ken comes in. You, know how, you, you know, know how I get when Ken comes over. You know how I get when Ken he comes gonna get crazy. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> like people's ears are bleeding. Um, uh, yeah. So um, we we see that there's a that there is a disruption in the in the village, and Ken runs. Megan, out. 
for the record, just was just she just cut she was just sca- she just yeah Megan put it to, put it down fl- flipped straight to a page of Ken with his shirt off <laughs> yeah Megan we're and just stopped flipping here. mysteriously yeah. yeah and just stared it's a at part it. of the story it's a pivotal point <laughs> yeah we'll see if we can <laughs> pop that up for do just, it will have his head <laughs> popping up right there for people to just yeah, look I saw at her right realize yeah. that we can see her <laughs> and then flip try to flip the page. <laughs> Um, but these, <laughs> and I think they're called the Zed. The Zed come Zed. and they come. Bad Zeds. Yeah, bad Zeds. They come to. They're not Zs or Zeds. It's Z E E D. So Z Zed Zed. Zed Zeds. I don't like that. That Z Z is Zed. Other places. That's okay. Doesn't make any sense to me. I'm sure people don't like that it's Z here. All right. Well, if you have a problem with that, comment below. Yeah, don't alienate our Australian. Vote audience. Z or Zed. I didn't say which one I preferred. I just don't like that they're different. <laughs> you said you didn't like one. I did. <laughs> and then you didn't comment on, on your preference of the other one. Yeah. Um, I didn't say I didn't like Z. All right. We're getting caught in the alphabet. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. And then he runs out. Uh, he We find out that he could have got out of the cell at any point, really. Um, because uh, Bat is like, we, we, we can grab the keys. And, and Ren even leaves the keys for them. And and Ken is like, nah, I don't need those things. And he pries the bars open. Awesome. And, awesome. Yeah, there there is such a, a charm to it. This I mean, this is a great action prologue mm-hmm. type of story. But yeah, I'm like, I'm hearing the music. I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, get him. Like, I assume we'll find out your origin later, but that's not what this is about. Yeah. This is the Black Swordsman arc where we just get to see you be a badass for a, mm-hmm. a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, and he goes out, he goes outside and and uh it's so funny because, and we'll talk about now, um, Hokoto Shuken or Shinken, the, um, the martial art that he uses, but he goes out and I mean, he, you know, it's, it's pressure points, right? Like he goes up to the big bad and these guys are huge by the way. Yeah. I I was like, why are they so large? That's what, so I could, so berserk. All right. So like the, the idea of like the enemies being like more like exaggerated in their physique. Mm-hmm. Like, so that is a little inspired from this. Probably. And then he was inspired from someone. So we'll find out. We'll find out the source of the villain like looking like a little like beyond human. Yeah, because they're they're huge. Yeah, they're beyond human. I'm they like, really what do they are. put it in the water? Like there's like a man this big and the villains are always like this big. <clears throat> I mean, I'm maybe like, how nuclear do you even... fallout has, you know, altered their genetics. <gasps> Super mutants. Good, Josh. Mm-hmm. You're learning. Thank you. Some um, FUV up in here. FUV? Yeah, F U F U me. <laughs> Please, oh. yes. <laughs> Don't mind if your, your body seems uh, doing something to Cody. Yeah, I, I, I like. Maybe I like doing no you in the comments too. Let me know what it's doing to you in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he goes out there, and he, um, you know, pressure points someone. He's got the ada ada ada. You know Ooh. what I mean? He's going ham. And I like love the, that. The, the, yeah. The way his body moves, where it's more yeah. like it's more agile and fluid. Well, this is that that's that Bruce Lee inspiration. Mm-hmm. He's kind of moving like a martial artist, like, like almost like a, yeah, like oh. water, and almost like a boxer kind of too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's you know he's not punch. It's like yeah, he like knows what he's doing with his yeah, body. Yeah, he he's trained. <laughs> he knows how to work it. Yeah, I like to see his boxers. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't mind. All right, was, keep was, the, we're gonna. You, you guys got yeah, really quiet, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Boxing. well, I would like. To, <laughs> I just when you say we're quiet, I just want to be more quiet. Um, it's funny. Boxers, <laughs> Boxing Day, Australia, Mad Max. Okay, sure. What? If it keeps the episode what moving that? forward, no, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> if it keeps keep it moving forward, follow a train of uh, logic. But once he applies these pressure points, um, <laughs> he has seconds, or his um, victim has seconds before their, you know, head. Or wherever he he struck them, explodes from the inside was, out. I didn't know that was from this because mm-hmm. that like everyone has seen the "You Are Already Dead" meme. Yeah, but like as I'm like reading, I'm like, is this where the oh? And then we're, like, and okay, we're gonna yeah. like see it at the climax. We're gonna see it down the road. Like no, right off the bat, you see his move that mm-hmm. like everyone knows. Yeah, I thought we were gonna see it way later, mm-hmm. and I realized it in the moment. Mm-hmm. Like oh, this is that. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, so this martial arts style is a style that because um, it was you know the editor kind of pitched this series to the writer and to the artist, and in That's, the back of this too, it yeah. tells you where he got it from, right? And that he was they were struggling to figure out what sort Struggles. of. They were they were strugglers. Oh. They were um just they were trying to decide where or what kind of power system to use, and they couldn't really figure it out, or what kind of martial arts to kind of base it on, and they couldn't figure it out. And he's like, I just stumbled into a bookstore, and I just happened to see this like red book, 
that had um, this Chinese acupuncture story in it. And it was about a guy who was like trying to fix people's eyesight through acupuncture. And he's like, I just thought to myself, like, wouldn't that be a really cool martial art? And he's like, so I ran back <laughs> and told him we should do that. And we did. Tried it, it on it, my friend, completely failed. They're now blind. <laughs> yeah, they're blind, yeah. <laughs> it's always yeah. interesting hearing like editor-writer relationships mm -hmm. and how like they're way more like productive than I, than I assume they would be. Well, I imagine some of them are, and some of them are probably not. Yes. Some but, of them are Sugar Ray and his editor. Oh, which... Uh, Sugar Ray? <laughs> Sugar Ray Leonard? <laughs> no, it was for Fruits Basket. It was yeah. just oh, reference. Yeah. Um, um, if you know, you know, I guess. I haven't seen Fruits Basket. Yeah, Cody doesn't appreciate it, but I do. Thank I you. like fruit. Uh, okay. Well, why don't you hop, on it, hop in a basket, and let's get back to... Honey Crisp Apple. <laughs> okay, Cody, please. Um, and so I thought that was a really interesting story because just to hear how such an influential sort of, you know, iconic now martial art was just like, oh, yeah, I wandered into a bookstore mm. and found it. So you never know when you're going to stumble upon a great idea. Yeah, I mean, it really is, like, you know, so fun that like, yeah. So first of all, this had to exist for all these other works to exist. Yeah. He had to just like stumble upon an acupuncture book yeah. and be like, that's the ticket. That's it. And who knows if it would have worked if this wasn't, if it didn't have that. If you stumbled into like another shop, just like yeah. a massage parlor. Yeah, that would have been a very different story. Megan probably would have still liked it. <laughs> <laughs> but he takes him out and this is where, yeah. you know, he is very, <laughs> his power is on full display. Mm -hmm. He is, he is, he is not threatened by these guys. And a lot of the first volume up until a very certain point he is, none of these people are of any danger to no. him. He yeah, you're is taking them all out. appreciating the choreography and like the artwork. Yeah. Yeah. He says it like, you guys aren't going to kill me. <laughs> what do you mean? This is my, no, that's, what are we, we would doing here? be remiss though to not talk about without, uh, with the explosions that are happening as he is using this martial art, the hyper violence, the gore. It's graphic. Yeah. Hell yeah. It's did graphic. You, did you know how like the, the idea of blood spurting out during wounds a lot came from? No. Um, so like there was a scene in like a very old movie, black and white, where it's like, okay, we're going to cut you in the stomach. And like, we have like a blood machine set to like go off mm -hmm. and it accidentally went off like way too much and spread blood everywhere. And they just went, that was awesome. Yeah. Let's do that for everything. And like, so in Japanese, like media mm -hmm. blood spraying became like a huge thing. That's awesome. I mean, this is like to the point of like stumbling into a bookstore, this machine not working. I mean, a lot of creativity is just Act, happy accidents. Happy accidents. Yeah, figuring it out as you go. Um, that's really interesting. Though. I didn't know that. And he, um, yeah, he, he, he's, he's using this technique of people and they're exploding. You're seeing guts. You're seeing bones. You're seeing blood. You're seeing everything just on, on, on full display. It is, it is equally as gory as berserk uh, sometimes, if not, sometimes, if not more, because, I mean, you're just seeing it in the first volume constantly, man, in, in like new and creative ways. It feels like a horror movie or a Final Destination in that way that it's like always it's always a new variation of his technique and he's always hitting them in a different spot and causing different body parts to do different things. Which yeah, like uh, living in a world where I don't know there's anime adaptions, I would assume like the I would look forward to hearing the noises of oh, that like yeah. The tch, 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 tch. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. Wow. You should get into Foley, dude. Yeah, no, the, the, yeah, I'm, a, I'm gonna do Foley. Yeah, Megan, you should be a voice actor, and Cody, you should do Foley. I'll do uh, the Foley. noises of oh, that. I'm limited to those two things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We can work as a team. All right. It's cool. uh, <laughs> um, and then that's kind of like because I, 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 um, I want to talk about the, the the beats that are you know really really reminiscent of other stories, and then ask you guys. Uh, or other stories are reminiscent of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I do want to kind of get through what happens in the first couple of chapters. Not that they're not amazing. Luckily, great. Luckily, discussion-wise, there is only so much you can say that was a cool fight. Scene. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And in the first couple of chapters, like, he is, you know, working his way through villain after villain after you, villain to get to a bigger villain. It is like in an action movie, this is definitely what you, you wait to see. Mm -hmm. So it is, you know, it is very nice. Right off the bat, you get all of the climactic fights. You get a boss that he has to fight. You get all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, there's always, and, I, yeah, I like when he killed that other guy too. Yeah. And there are nice moments sprinkled throughout, like the guy with the old man with the seeds. That was a really mm -hmm. sweet moment where uh. this old man is like, you know, dying on the side of the road because he spent months trying to find rice seeds to take back to his village and when you see pages later this villain who's trying to get to ken 
um, just murder him after Ken like went out of his oh way to save God. him. I know. I literally wrote, "Oh, the old man made it." <laughs> oh, spoke too fucking soon. Yeah. I mean, it was just like that. There, everyone's like, "Yeah, he did it. The old man did it. He brought he yeah. brought honor to our fucking village." Yeah, and then just like. Were you the fucking old man that did that? Yeah. I was like, God damn it. They really let you believe that he's going to he's gonna survive. Know. Just to take it take it right away from I you. I know. Oh, we forgot. I mean, the Rin, he put magic on her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I to- we totally forgot to talk about that. He puts fucking magic on her and he's like, your heart will open up and then you can speak truly. Yeah. And the kid's like, she can't fucking talk. Yeah, because she's been so traumatized by her parents being like brutally yeah. murdered in front of her that she's either lost the ability to talk or so traumatized she like can't bring herself to talk. And then it's almost like through pressure points, through the, but it almost looks like electricity. Yeah, it's like too. magic. He's yeah. Just like, I, yeah, I'm kind of, I mean, you know, it is magic. It's magic. I yeah, mean, it's magic. You know, yeah. the, the fighting style is pressure points, but it that is a mat like you can't do that. Yeah. It is magic. Maybe yeah. it's a placebo. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he even yeah. says yeah, that if you too. believe hard yeah. enough. Yeah, he did say that. He did say that. Yeah. Um you can <laughs> explode. But yeah, she talks and then like when she leaves, and this is where it also and I you know, obviously this inspired Berserk, but I don't want to keep comparing them, even though there's a, a part later where it's uh, more obvious to compare them, but um, well, I think that's, I mean, that, that's the interesting thing because there's some things that I read. I'm like, oh, this ripped off that. Mm-hmm. But with this, I'm like, oh, that's similar to what happened in Berserk. It's a different feeling because they're different stories. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, that's what that saying, that's how that saying goes that Picasso said. Um, a great, it's a me, good, Picasso. No, he said good artists copy and great artists steal. That's what he said. Hmm. And uh, when you really unpack that, it's it's really beautiful. It's really beautiful. And then another composer who took music and like you know popular what it makes music I, yeah. I get i get the meaning yeah like, another composer who took like popular music and like made it his own and people were like how could you take elements of other things that already exist like you know you're 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 um you're you're you don't you're not respecting what came before you and he's like you say respect i say love because he's like i love it that much and so this is that's why that's why like I liked I I like this aspect or this side of the conversation and and the 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 conversation about like inspiration because sometimes it can feel like, oh, they ripped this thing off. But sometimes you can tell when it's a, a labor of love. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, there's, def- there's a huge difference between homage mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and rip off. Mm-hmm. But the, the people who rip off will use the word homage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of hard to. Yeah. Decipher. We're never going to admit. Yeah, I ripped that off. <laughs> I didn't think you would find out. How did you know? How did you know that that was an homage? <laughs> um, but it's also because the brand of the sacrifice and this 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 um, mark that he has on him, these that look like at the time, before I knew where they came from, almost look like kind of bullet holes in his chest. Yeah. I thought he got shot three yeah. times. Um, the, the leader of the village is telling Ren as he's leaving. She's like, why are you leaving? And, and Bat is like, we could stay here and get free food. And the leader of the village says, wherever that mark is, you know, destruction or chaos will will follow and that did feel a little brand of the sacrifice Mm -hmm. brand's like no i was like same girl theirs was like (laughs) yeah theirs was mostly like a a metaphor because well that guy gets into like trouble a lot Mm -hmm. and then yeah yeah yeah. with berserk it's a literal exact aspect of it uh and then that's when all the 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 stuff with the old man and the seeds happen and the old man dies and that was you know a very (laughs) heartfelt moment and then he starts working. He, he starts work. I know the the doodles, the drawings. He starts working his way through Batty after after Batty. Batty after Batty. Yeah. That'd be a good name for some pop song. Batty after Batty. He working bat. He working. I'm up to bat for these after baddies. Baddies. I'm up to bat. I'm going. I'm going up to bat for these baddies. Yeah. Baddies oh. call me daddy. <laughs> oh my god! You know what? Let's stop doing this podcast bullshit. Yeah, let's all get let's in the studio. Let's, let's get behind the mic. I think we were beating around the bush try. wrong enough. <laughs> Took us over a hundred episodes to figure it out. All right, we're done, guys. Shit, I gotta go. Um, but I thought this was um a really cool way for him to get to because there's a a guy. I I I felt like it's only a matter of time before he gets or crosses paths with someone that's on equal footing mm-hmm. because. You know, he's. He, we find out that there's this other group that are because, like Cody's forehead, all have like different um, suits, spades, hearts, diamonds, clubs. For audio listeners, they have marks on my forehead. Oh yeah, and I'm, I'm, uh, I look normal. He's not just cosplaying uh, Harley Quinn. 
<laughs> right. Even right. though I'm crazy. Even though I'm a psycho. Yeah, I have to go to number two later. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Here we go. The, queen, the king of chaos. The, the king, king of, of chaos. chaos. Um, we need him to do the mission for sure. <laughs> um, but it was, um, it was a really cool reveal that there's this other person, king, that he's trying to get to. And he's trying to get through all of his lackeys some of which are stronger than others, but he has to work his way through suits. He has to beat mm-hmm. Spade. He has to beat Diamond. He has to beat Club. Which is, a, yeah. a, you know, like a quick, like, theme. What should we go with? Like, playing cards. That's good. He'll fight the Jag. He'll fight the Spade. Yeah. Like, yeah it's, it's, a, it's, like, fun that there's just themes going on. Yeah. And, like, uh, that's, that's this group of enemies he's fighting this week. Yeah. And uh, I thought it was kind of fun that, well, not fun, but mm. it did show these, in these moments, with with these villains like it showed how how horrible they are and and that ken doesn't always show up in time in fact he often shows up after someone has been brutally yeah brutally undeservedly murdered yeah murdered i mean i mean even before when he shows up at first i i do like watch see when like manga like this or berserk or like anything that shows like the severity of like what's actually going on because you know you see guys on motorcycles are like hey fuck you but then there's like a little girl like carrying her dad that's about oh. to be hung and she's just like no and she's struggling they're like ah, she's not gonna make it she's gonna let go in a couple of seconds i was like damn and that's that's uh one of the the things that um really helps when you have the indestructible hero character mm-hmm. is it's like not like they still can't stop everything mm-hmm. um you know if you're gonna do the flash you have to make the role he can't he can't get there quick enough he has to fail on some levels so well there's always something bad happening it's yeah. like batman yeah. he can't be over there you know everywhere at once yeah and uh, that's like a thing i've seen in uh mad max and a boy and his dog too i think there was a, a an era a gold a golden era a golden age mm-hmm. of post-apocalypse desert movies mm-hmm. A uh, boy and his dog was one, and that opens with the character like just seeing like a family being attacked. Well, mm-hmm. Mad Max was inspired by a boy and his dog. It is wild how influential that one was too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I'm like, you watch it, and you're like, hmm, interesting. Yeah, uh, and that's just that creative lineage that we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's crazy. You would think it starts at Mad Max, but no, there's a movie called A Boy and His Dog, mm-hmm. and that one, the main character is a boy, so he especially can't like save. He doesn't even expect to, and that's yeah. like an interesting part about him. Is he? S- he survived this long. You don't do that by being the hero. Yeah. A boy and his dog would also be a good uh, alternate title for chainsaw man, which I think we said in a previous episode. Yes, yeah. I did. I think I said it. No, I said a boy and his Ooh. chainsaw dog. Oh. oh, I did say that. You're right. Oh my God. <laughs> you're lucky. You are you're a incredibly Cody. ripped. You're, it's an homage to you. Dude. You're, 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 you're a Poe cheater. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. My hands really sweaty. It is really wild sweaty. how sweaty your hands I'm are. I'm sorry. I mean, you should be the one who has the least body heat yeah. here. I'm sweating what like mean? a dog in my Well, Josh skin. is built like a like a a brick, brick shit house. house. Oh, brick shit house. I like it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm built like a, a cool guy. You're built yeah, like you're a, just built an outhouse. Like, yeah, you're built like every like every nerdy character, like oh. every main character's best friend in every movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was cool. supposed to be a diss, but you got excited. Yeah, he did. He's like, thank you. Megan uh, had the best. I, mean, I don't know if you heard that I was built like an outhouse. That's, oh, that is good. That's the comeback he should have had. Megan, that was good. I know. You didn't hear that? That was good. No, no. Was no good. I don't think you want to do that. I don't. It's wild. Um, so, um, <laughs> yeah, it was embarrassing. To get back on track, there is this moment where he finally gets through all of it, and we see King, this guy King. And he, King, he has no dick. He has no dick. I was like, what him. the fuck? I mean, yeah, it's like you can show guts, you can show gore, you can show eyeballs balls popping out but you can't show dick yeah i know like where I mean, are the standards show me dick. yeah show me dick like what do you mean show yeah. me dick yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like it's a it's, you it's can absurd. quote megan on that one. it's that's absurd what, at this point that's <laughs> his, <laughs> well, you don't 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 she's famous for saying she's famous for saying give me liberty or give me dick okay yeah we should stop it's funny but it can go down a bad route yeah yeah and we can make those jokes Yes, okay, but we like, can. Yeah, because we're asexual. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Technically, <laughs> technically, yes. Not, not, by, <laughs> not by choice. Not by choice. Right, yeah. right, right. Um, and uh, <laughs> and we find out King's backstory, and you know, again, not to compare it to Guts and Griffith, but you know, it we felt, have to stop. I mean, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah, we got a white hair guy. <clears throat> we got a black hair guy. 
And we got a, a woman involved that um, uh, was... And the white-haired guy is beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, a fiancé of Ken's that was taken. And yeah, he was... Uh, if Guts, if Berserk came before this, this pun would work better. But you, Shin, uh, King, he's a little Griff-ish. He's a little Griff-ish. But, I mean, Griff yeah. is a little Shin-ish. So, yeah. yeah, it doesn't work so much. But I, I liked the I pun. liked it. I liked it, Cody. It. You could have just said it and we would have been like, oh, that was good. I would have given you shit for yeah. it, but I would have also liked it. It's, just, oh. it's, it's yeah. good. It's just wrong. Exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. which, you know, a lot of things are. Yeah, who says you got to be right all the time? Um, <laughs> but it is here where we get to see his backstory and we mm -hmm. get to see how he got these, how he got these scars. Which I was, I, I, I got more emotional than I thought I mm -hmm. was going mm -hmm. to, especially in a story like this. Yeah, and this is another thing that's really cool about Fifth, Fist of the North Star. It is action heavy, but there are moments of, of heart. Mm -hmm. And Ken is not just a, a tough guy and an immovable force he is he is not afraid to to show his emotion and there was another shot that i'm like oh i have seen this from memes where he is just crying oh yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. which i thought like that was that was another thing i was gonna have to wait way longer into the story to see yeah he's bald but you get uh, just a solid shot of this tough man crying that single tear and good for him dude mm -hmm. uh people yeah it people takes need strength to, see that. The, to be vulnerable absolutely and um <laughs> We find out that, it, that, that their backstory is essentially that they were both um, training under the same master. Megan, you uh, referred to it earlier. There's two styles of this martial arts, two ends of this or sides of the same coin. Um, Nanto is one of them, right? Nanto and Hokuto. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, their sensei, their master, had recently died. And now because he had, had died... Ken is trying to give him a proper burial and move on and live his life with his fiance. But Shin is like, well, now that this guy is gone, I got no competition. I'm coming for you. And by the way, I've had eyes for your gal this whole time. So, so such a funny response. He's like, I've always loved you. And she goes, just knowing you feel that way disgusts me. Mm -hmm. And it's such a funny thing to say to yeah. put someone down. No, you, just knowing you feel that way fucking disgusts me. That's yeah. one of those things I like where it's like, oh yeah, for sure she's worth fighting for, you know? Oh yeah. yeah. She's not love interest. She's got like attitude and stuff. This is the when it does the flashback to like mm -hmm. not his origin exactly, but right, right, right. Mm -hmm. The origin right. of this conflict. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, you know, she really sticks to her guns, man. She is not going to She's not going to let this happen, but at a certain point, you know, Shin grabs Ken and starts using because his martial art is while Ken can like take your your everything that's inside of you and make it make it explode. Mm -hmm. He can reach through anything from outside in where Ken is inside out. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so he's like, all right, well, I'm going to take him and I'm just going to slowly, you know, poke each of my fingers. And you just see the fingers just going deeper and deeper and deeper into his chest. Um, and he's telling her, by the way, Ken is telling her, like, it's not worth it. Like, <laughs> live, survive, you know. And she, you know, reluctantly says, like, fine. But I even think she says, like, just know that I'm going to hate it and that I'm not going to ever really love you. But I'll go if you just leave him, if you don't mm -hmm. let him die. Um, because she's also there. Uh, and oh. uh, there oh. is a uh, she's there with Shin uh -huh. right when when Ken gets there yeah and we just kind of see uh, Shin like kind of caressing her face and touching her face a little bit but she almost looks like she almost looks like she's done she's like I don't I don't I don't want anything to do with this guy I'm mm -hmm. I'm so either broken or I'm just so done that I don't like he doesn't even deserve my eyes I mean like yeah and he also got like you know. He got a posse of women with him too. So I'm like, this guy's obviously not a good guy, but. Right. Yeah, but it's very clear the to him. The ladies love him. The ladies, ladies love him. Love him. Ladies love him. Ladies love. Yeah, no mm -hmm. dick no dick for old men. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but it's really in this moment that we get like our first kind of kind of twist um, because obviously. You know, Ken survives and then uses his 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 fury, his, his rage. Um, I think that's what he because Shin told him in their last moments, like, you don't have the devotion. Yeah, dude. And then when he comes back and he's giving him a run for his money, he's like, oh, you're not the same Ken I knew. He's like, what happened? Uh, what happened? And he's like, I, I used what you said 
and and acquired devotion, but also like I used my fury. That's, I have furious devotion. And that's when he starts being able to actually fight back against mm -hmm. Shin. And then who wants to drop this bomb um, where we find out um, Eggs. what's up with uh, old, old Ken's fiance. Yeah, so he's like beating this 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 guy up and then he looks over and then he thinks that she's dead because he ends up like he goes, shoot, yeah he 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 hits her uh, chest and then he's like a doll and i was like what <laughs> yeah i mean that I was, was a realistic like, doll who made that in the who apocalypse? who made that in the apocalypse uh, i bet what, you what the resources? body pillow market is insane in the apocalypse mm, a lot of a lot of leftover like you know those real sex dolls of course yeah 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 you know a lot of do they have those in the 80s well, who knows? This takes I place mean, in 1990X. Oh, 1990 X. And that could be right. any. That could be <laughs> yeah. 19. It could be 90, 91. 2014. 92. 1990. 2030. Yeah. But very realistic. I mean, just spot on. I was like, so, that was so sad. And then there's this moment where like, cause yeah, we find out that she hasn't been there, that she's a dummy. And then we get an, a flashback of Shin and he's almost like really sad. And we, like, we have this moment where like, not that this redeems him at all, but we kind of find out that he like really did love her. I mean, he is a twisted, power hungry, narcissist, egomaniac, but he also like seemed to really like this one person and was so hurt that he could never have her or get her to see him the way she saw Ken. Because he's like, I, I, I raped, I pillaged, or not raped, he's like, I pillaged. <laughs> I feel like talking about how he's not getting her attention. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 the worst thing you could but possibly those words do. Go those words go together. Yeah, um, sure. And and I'll cut that out. Um, <laughs> and he's like, I pillaged. Uh -huh. I um, stole. Didn't, didn't do the other thing. I, I stole. Killed. I yes. I did it all for you. I bought you jewelry. I bought you, uh, you know, whatever you want. And she's and he's like, and she never looked at me like she looked at uh -huh. you. And then when we were a top. You know, our kingdom looking out at everything. And I, as I said, everything here is hers. Like she, she just like took a step off and like killed herself. She's like, I'm, you're, I'm never going to love you. And because of that, you're only going to keep doing bad and horrible shit. So I'm out. And she just died. Um, which is why in Shin's last moments, he kind of does the same thing. He like picks himself up mm -hmm. and he's because Ken obviously gets him. And there's other, you know, Oh yeah, and fun does, villains too. It does the pressure point thing, and you're like, "How long do I have to live?" You're like, you get one minute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which this is something that we talked about in Gantz, which I really liked, and I'm glad that they. Oh were, yeah. Yeah, 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 I was trying to remember where it was from the yeah. delay and the yeah. death. I was like, "Where did I see?" That was driving me nuts. I'm glad you pointed that out. Yeah, it really, yeah, that's exactly the same. Because you get that moment of he's like reflect you uh -huh. know, on all the things that you've done. Uh -huh. and we got that earlier, and the guy's like, "I don't want to die. I don't want to die," and then mm -hmm. he died. But then like Shin's like sitting there, and he's like, "All right." And he's just, that's when he like delivers that, you know, monologue and then steps off. And it's just like a really cool story device. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're, yeah. They're, yeah. There's someone to be given a hard time limit. And I'm like, you have like 45 seconds. They're like, all right, well, you know, it yeah. is a, it's a good thought experiment for any character. Like what would they do if they were like, you have 45 seconds and you're going to die, you know? So you have this character who's like, all right, let me. Let me, you know, pull up a seat and like talk to you a little yeah. bit more or being like, I don't, I would, I would be the guy who just screams. I don't want to die. Yeah, probably. Me too. Probably. I'd be like, where are you? <laughs> and <laughs> I'm so sorry. And then boom. You know what? Um, if Josh did the pressure point on us both and it was like, you both have one minute to live. Yeah. We would just, we would just sing. I, miss I mean, you. that's fine. Cause you guys would be gone in a minute <laughs> 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 and I'll miss you. <laughs> All right. You'll miss us. Um, we'll be the voice inside and your head. No. And um, no. <laughs> and that is like the emotional, I think, peak of the first mm -hmm. volume. Peak. And it's awesome, man. And it's awesome. I mean, we finally get to see some of this equal. We get a little bit of a backstory about obviously how he got scars, who this woman is to him. And Shin says something very interesting to him. He's like, I'm going to take away, you know, what gave you that that furious devotion. And now without it, like, what are you going to do? The so, rage of emotion. Yeah. Ocean of emotion, mm -hmm. fire of desire, mm -hmm. silence of violence, of fist yeah. of pissed, fist of piss, mm. pissed, like, pissed. Like I'm pissed. Like you're pissed, or you're like he pissed himself. Not like pissed, like piss yourself, like piss. Like I'm so pissed. Okay. He piss or fister. No, Cody. No, no. no. That's two out of three. No, <laughs> Megan's just being polite. No. Um, and I think that this, you know. 
I think that this worked and I think it, it works so well because we get to see that he has heart and yes, Cody. Oh, because you you said like this was originally going to be a one shot. Well, no, I mean, the one shot part was when he was in high school and then when it oh. came back out, that's when they decided to to adopt this like post apocalyptic because it landscape. kind of has a one shot feel because it does feel like there's your complete story there. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I do think there is something to what you're saying too, though, about, you know, a story that can can do that in the beginning mm. because they have so much more uh planned mm. that they it's kind of a ballsy move, right? Yeah, it's say, it's like, a, I, I view it as a power move by the writer yeah. to be like, here's everything I have like right off the bat. Mm -hmm. So it's only like and it's I I assume you also have to challenge yourself as a writer too, if you're gonna like put all of it forward. Then yeah, you, then totally. you have to keep going in like amping it up. Yeah, yeah. Well, you said you looked further into the story. I can't even think about what happens <laughs> next. I know he goes on little crusades here and there with the little mm -hmm. goggles kid, but mm. yeah, I couldn't, is, I yeah. couldn't say who is always just there, uh, by the way. And he's um, always just saying the worst shit. Yeah. I mean, he's honestly saying, I think what most people yeah. would say. Don't you know? help that old man. He doesn't mean shit. And then he's like, Oh, sort of damn. the anti puck, anti puck, anti puck. Yeah. Or puck is the anti kid from North star. Well, see, I was thinking maybe you could look at it. Maybe if you really want to compare the two this much, you could say that that bat is like Isidro and Ren is like puck. Mm. Mm. Oh, he has two angels. He has the, the boy and the girl, both yeah. are like offering different moral. And she, by the way, it's around this time too, after this is resolved, he's like, what am I going to do? And he, f he goes to another town. He goes to an oasis mm -hmm. and he finds out that, you know, just because he defeated King, that there are other people with armies and empires where they're just torturing people. And they're at this bar where someone crashes through a window, um, threatening the owner to like feed him. And bat makes that like joke. He's like, I'll take care of it, uh, for like two days worth of meals. And he's like, no, <laughs> and he's like, I can eat way. I'm going to eat way less than that guy's going to eat. If mm -hmm. you let him win. And he's like, fine, a day and a half. And he's mm -hmm. like, fine. And then he's like, all right, get him, Ken. Um, and so he defeats him. But when they're in the bar, what's interesting is that they, they, there's a, another group that's rounding up women and we see a, a bus pass by or a van or a truck pass by and it's full of women. And Rin is in the car. And I was so glad to see her come back. I wasn't glad to see her in that situation. Yeah. But apparently there's she your, went looking for him. There's your story hook. Yeah. 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 This is what's going to kind of motivate him, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is what's going to keep him moving forward. And he finds out, you know, that, that they're taking all these women. And these guys look like Nazis, by the way. Let's just put that out there. Um, yeah, they like, have the uniform and they're just doing bad stuff. Yeah. And, you know, they're supposed to be Green Berets or they're supposed to be like uh, army specialists. And we get a crazy scene with them too, where they're tormenting the people in this truck because their fathers and husbands come to save them. And they grab, they round them all up and they're like, all right, who's your daughter or whose dad is this or whose husband is this? I mean, that was crazy. Yeah, that was horrible. That was so hard to read and watch because not only, again, it's in these moments that you think like the hero is going to show up and save the day. But he all, and it's no fault. I, I think this is what the story does well, because like you said, Cody, when he is so powerful and no one can beat him, it's like his weakness is that he all, he can't, he's, he's still human enough to not always be able to get there in time. He's a day late and a buck short. There we go. Alternate title for this. <laughs> um, and so we see like, he has this like piano wire thing and he's just like slowly slicing through people's heads and, and it's just it's just hard to see because the little girl like if the little girl is watching her dad be decapitated. Mm -hmm. It's rough, man. And what's even crazier is that Ken does show up, and when he shows up, he he I love that he always uses his martial arts for stuff that's uh, to do different things. Like with the guy who barged through the restaurant door, he like he like just made his arms. He gave him like the strength of a regular man. So he's like, you're gonna have to work for your food from now on. <laughs> and then with this guy, like he hit him in a way that the piano and put the piano wire around his neck, this like officer's neck. And he's like, your arms are going to just naturally start to <laughs> pull apart over time. And, and that's what I like to see in a protagonist is making the people suffer. Some might say like, Oh, that's not heroic or that's sadistic. I think it, it gives a great catharsis that I'm looking for in villains. Yeah. He totally says that too. He's just like, no, please spare me. And he's like, well, did you ever spare anyone who asked you mm -hmm. that? And then he's like, bah, which so few times mm -hmm. do you have the protagonist mention that in a story? Mm -hmm. It's something I, I, I crave. Yeah. 
I mean, you mentioned it in our, our Berserk video, and I think it's true. It's like it is cathartic to see that happen because it's it's strange how how rare it is and, and so fulfilling. So yeah. yeah, so many stories are you beat up the minions and then you let the main guy who caused all of it go because then you'll be just as bad as him. Because yeah. then he'll change. Yeah, because yeah. we all deserve. Or we can't, yeah, become the thing we hate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's mm -hmm. like, no, you killed the guy who killed like 40 kids. You're better than him, I promise yeah. you. Yeah. Objectively, on any scale. And, yeah, and it does start to feel like a mean guy competition. At how bad, <laughs> how, how horrible can these guys get? Because then you find out, oh, they have another city <laughs> called God City, and the commander that is training those soldiers. It's like making people train and fight to the death. And the first fight you see is like two dudes fighting. And he's like, all right, whoever wins this sparring match, like you got to kill the other. And he, and you see one guy defeat his partner and he's like, all right, what are you waiting for? Kill him. He's like, this is just training. Right. And he goes, oh yeah, you guys are brothers. huh?" Mm -hmm. And he like grabs his hand with a knife in it. And then like makes him stab and kill his brother. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, man, everybody's worse than the last guy. Yes. It's, it's what you got to do. It's what you got to do, I guess. But man, yeah. And it's, it's a mad world. It's a mad world. Mm -hmm. Megan, you've, you've done it. You've unlocked a new, yeah, you've transcended. And that's just. Okay. Don't get ahead of yourself. Mad facts. Not bad. She came through. She you, came through. I honestly had no faith in you. I had wow. zero, but you came through. All right. The snapping. No. And now you're getting cocky, no. but no, no. For and honestly, dancers. like we find out that there's <laughs> this last little sh kind of showdown. Like Ken, he's like, uh, He's like, if you guys want to be God's people, you know, or, 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 or be the chosen ones, like you got to work for it because God chose all of you. And then there's just Ken in the back and he's like, he didn't choose me. <laughs> or I don't remember choosing me. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, who are you? And then they kind of, you know, have a, the start of their fight. And then the first volume ends. Yeah. This was such a full story. Yeah. Really was, man. Yeah. And it I'm was a, a breeze. Because yeah. I, there, I, I, yeah, I really love the charm of this starts on what you would imagine would be the ending of his story. Mm -hmm. And then find it, no, your beloved doth die for you. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, well, I got to go do something else now. Yeah, man. It, it was 13 chapters, this first volume. And I, you know, when I, whenever we read a, a new volume, I always look at the chapter each week. I look at the chapter list. And um, when I saw 13, I was like, oh, man, this is going to take me a while to get through. But I, I felt like I blinked and it was it was over and it and it was so fun. The art held up. It was it was just a good time on. And then the, the all the history and things that inspired was just a cherry on top. man. Yeah. Like I was reading it on Viz Media and I was just like, OK. And I was watching like reading the preview and I was at Barnes and Noble. I was like, I wonder if they have it. Mm. And I literally get up and go see and I get the last one. And I was like, oh, I'm so glad I got to read this on the page because yeah. it's really good to appreciate the art. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Um, but let's get some final thoughts from you guys. I know we kind of gave a, a few of them, but I really want to hear, you know, how, how this series like felt reading it. Uh, yeah. Cody, have you guys seen a boy and his dog? No, mm -mm. we shouldn't watch that. We should. Uh, this honestly, this brought me down the, the biggest, like a uh, rabbit hole being like, Oh, I got to re I want to rewatch that. I mm -hmm. want to rewatch that. I want to watch that. Yeah. And then just really like remembering like, uh, like Metal Gear Solid is a very big Japanese game that was inspired by Escape from New York, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is also a not like beloved movie out here. Yeah. Oh. But it was also like Snake Plissken. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You got yeah. a little solid snake. But mm -hmm. like, yeah, he's like riding a tsunami with a surfboard and it's such like a, <laughs> such an 80s action <laughs> movie. And it's weird. I like, you know, that Mad Max, those get like, people like see that and they're like, Oh, that like that inspires them in like other countries. Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, it's fun to like, be like, okay. And then I was like, well, they were, they based that off this media. They based that, you know, star Wars is like inspired by Japanese like movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the, yeah. Like samurai and stuff. I mean, there's even like concept art of them and they looked more like samurai. I mean, it's crazy. Yes. How we bounce culturally off one another. And, and it's just so amazing. And I actually want to, who would have thought that the Australians are the ones who like started this whole thing of anime. I mean, in a roundabout kind of way, I mean, you look at it, you could say that they definitely played a big part mm -hmm. in, in, in modern, in modern shonen for sure. And to that we say, good day, mate. Good day, mate. <laughs> yeah. Good ma manga, 
mate. There we go. And uh, we'll do that at the end. Megan, I really want you to give us your final thoughts. I mean, I know you kind of touched on it a little bit, but is there anything else you want to say about this series? And I thought am a sucker for apocalypse anything. So I was very excited to give this a read. Finally, after being told, you know, oh, it comes from this, comes from that. And like talking about it with you guys more, I'm just like, damn, this was really good. And mm -hmm. the expectations blown away. Uh, I don't know where the story could go. I, I do want to keep reading it. I don't know how many volumes it has. I think it's kind of like a- I think it's like 27 -ish. 27. Yeah. I mean, I love Ken, so mm -hmm. I'm going to look up merchandise for him for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, You know, that's <laughs> selling point number one. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited to see his journey. And I, I think that he's a really good, I'm a sucker for the muscular heart men. Like, what can I say? Mm -hmm. What can I say? Can I say more? Can you, I say more? I mean, I don't think there's, I mean, you, you know, we could sit here and talk about it all can day. I, uh, I mean, you can, do you have more to say? No. Uh, um, <laughs> but I really, cause you were talking about the creative, like, like creative lineage is what yes. I keep going back to. And you were talking about how it sent you down a rabbit hole, right? And it really wanted, it made, it made you really want to, um, <laughs> kind of go back and 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 re-watch or re-experience things because i this uh what i'm I like i'm listening to like podcasts and stuff by like authors now and it's so interesting that to like to hear them be like i saw this and that made me like want to do this so like now this adds a new level like like watching this or like reading it i'm like oh they watched this mm -hmm. and went like and they like really took something from that. Like that adds a, an extra level of enjoyment for me now. Mm. And I, yes, I, I, before I, I close with sort of like my final, final thoughts, I just want to say in a, in, in this was a, this is a, a roundabout way of, of me getting to a place where I can talk about this, but um, it really kind of made me think about the North star, the North oh. star, but it also made me think about jujitsu Kaisen. <laughs> It really did. It really did. Because, How so? Because, because I, I was looking into just, you know, there's two TED Talks that I really love. <laughs> One is by the author of Eat, Pray, Love, and it's about where genius comes from. And number two is the art of stealing, like how to steal like an artist, right? Mm. This idea of homage and everything that, that comes from it. And in, in watching these TED Talks and in experiencing like my creative lineage and seeing other things that were so heavily inspired, by other things that you wouldn't even, that you would never imagine inspired each other. It, it just made me feel so grateful for, for just art and just how, how amazing and how it can cross continents. So I wrote a little thing and I wanna say it right now, but um, um, <laughs> with Jiu Jitsu Kaisen, right? I think that while the story might not uh, resonate with me the same way it does with so many other people, it becomes more clear that because of what it has uh, clearly been influenced and inspired by, that it is a labor of love, okay? Um, that composer I was talking about, Stravinsky, he put it, you respect, but I love. And I think that is what makes Jujutsu Kaisen great because good artists copy, but great artists steal. And that might seem harsh, but it's not because it's about exposing yourself to the greatest works of humanity, whatever is great to you, and applying them to what you're doing. As a story, it might not connect with me, but as a work, it is beautiful and undeniable. And I think that regardless of how a story might affect you, and that's my question in the beginning about asking you, like if you're interested in where stories come from, to, 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 to hear it be compared to so many things and talked about as an homage to so many different things, the story aside, the work itself and what and how much the creator must love manga and all of the things they must have loved that came before it to create what they created is a beautiful thing. Story aside. Story aside. For me personally, I just don't connect with it, but I respect it. And I just wanted to put that out there because we got a Discord member and um, a lovely person in our community. Um, his name is Kasten. Shout out Kasten. We love you. Oh, I would be way harsher on jujitsu if I wasn't on friendly terms with him. And I just want to say that I, I really, um, I really, you know, I really appreciate it. And, um, and I, and I, and I, and I see it now as a labor of love. And so, um, I'm coming around the hmm. mountain. The mount. <laughs> okay. There's an olive branch from Josh to the jujitsu fan base. Yeah. Cody, yours. Um, I mean, I liked the fist of the North Star. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, I mean, I really do enjoy like, like finding sources of things. I think that's so cool. And yeah. Then, it is. It always surprises me because every time, I'm like, and that's that's the source. I'm like, 
oh no, that's like hugely influenced by this. Never. And that is hugely influenced by this. And that was because of this. And that was because of this. Yeah, you'll never get to the bottom of it. And that's where that whole TED Talk, by the way, I'm not going to talk too, too long about it, but that's where it, it, it comes from and what it's about because the speaker thought he used to black out sections of newspaper and he thought he created that. And then when he posted it online, people were like, oh, you're stealing this guy's thing. Mm. And then he looked at that guy and that guy was like, oh, I'm inspired by this guy. And then that guy was like, oh, I'm inspired by this guy. And he just traced it back. And so it's also that's motivate, the, uh, motivate. That's the, um, the meatloaf pan story. No. We all know that. No, we don't. Where it's like, uh, oh, someone's, uh, they, they, uh, they cut the ends off their, their roast when they put it in the pan before they cook it. And they're like, why? And they're like, oh, because that's the way my mother do it. And they asked their mother, like, why did they do that? And they're like, well, that's because the way my mother did that. And they asked their mother, well, that's because that's the way my mother did that. And yes, that is too old now. But then they finally find out that the reason that their great, great, great grandmother cut the ends off was the pan was too short. It's beautiful. Mm. It's beautiful. Yeah. Bringing it home with meatloaf, dude. That's um, what I bring to the table is a hot serving of meat roast. Because your pan is too small. Because oh. my pan <laughs> is too small. <laughs> yeah. That's right, Josh. And let's, Thank you. And let's just wrap it up. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Fist of the North Star. Read it. Experience it. It holds up. It's beautiful. It's amazing. <laughs> it's powerful. It's meaningful. And um, if you haven't read it, do yourself a favor and, 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 and learn um, some anime and manga history and experience a wonderful story. And if you have read it, let us know what you think and what it means to you and how interested you you are in like where the things that you love come from in the comments down below. And check out Escape from L.A., Mad Max, and A Boy and His Dog. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Weirdly, and Fallout. Yes. Weirdly, some of the most influential movies. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. And I can and, really and talk play about... Fallout, to Megan's point. You should play Fallout. And I can talk about it all day. Like, I'm so fascinated by this stuff, man. And I just really, really love it. And it, it, is, it does inspire me as someone who like aspires to create things. Like, it's such a... I don't know. It's such a, a motivation. It, it, it reminds me of a little character uh -huh. called Midoriya Deku Iziki. <gasps> and he, uh -huh. and the way his powers uh, systems, where they each carry the torch and they add each member, bring something else to it, creating its own unique thing, even and passing it down for another person. Cody, you're on fire. To man. carry the torch, make it their own before it's passed down again. And that's a lot like writing. Is we're all just passing the torch down. One for all and all for one. And all for volume one. All for volume one. And that's, that's gonna, all right for me. And that's all right for me too. And hopefully for you. Thank you for, um, for watching. But we're not done yet. Um, let us know what you think of Fist of the North Star. Um, but now we have to jump into our famous segment the Warner's circle where volume one Sean, she goes she works so hard man she goes through comments that you've left on previous videos she pulls a few of them she reads them to us and we react and respond to them if you would like your comment read aloud in a future episode all you got to do is comment on this video or any of our previous videos so with all of that said volume one Sean, can you kick us off with the first comment please <laughs> This one comes from Average YouTube Enjoyer. Sakamoto looks so much like Josh here. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of bummed I had to miss that episode. Yeah, um, he stepped in for you, which was nice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was worried that Sakamoto, after not you know after reading the manga, um, that he wasn't gonna be much of a talker. But no, man, he had a lot to say. He, he talked, talked and, and talks and talks. <laughs> and talks. <laughs> yeah, we should have like hyped up that we got the real Sakamoto on to replace. Yeah, him. we didn't yeah. really put that out there too much, and I feel like we would have gotten more We're, views. <laughs> we don't talk about yeah. it enough, but sometimes Josh is just so busy at the gym that he oh, just can't. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. I it was kind of cool too that we got like Sakamoto like post like fight yeah. where he kind of like lost a lot of weight and he was looking really skinny. Oh uh, well, I don't no, remember that. No, happening. I don't remember that. I remember him being actually quite large in the episode. Mm -hmm. Pretty canon. Pretty, I mean, it pretty, is him. I mean, I guess he like he maintains the role. Like, yeah. His physique for the role. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Volume one, John, can you, um, can you read another uh, comment to us, please? <laughs> I thought he looked good. This one comes mm. from HM. Interesting. I heard Cody mention that he was going to watch NTHT. Oh, yeah. But I didn't expect him to like it so much to cover an entire episode for it. Honestly, I didn't expect him to like it at all, so I'm surprised. Anyway, thanks 
for the great content. Yeah, anyone who knows You're me welcome. knows Thank it's surprising. <laughs> Thank uh, you, HM. Knows it's surprising if I like anything. But that did remind me that I wanted to do and te- not now and then here and there, which we'll be doing. We'll be coming out our next bonus. Uh, uh, it'll already be out by the time this is out. Yeah. Then it's already out, and we've all watched it, and we all loved it. <laughs> yeah. um, which is what happened. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that was like the first time. Uh, like we originally had one person who would message us, uh-huh. and uh, you know, and he was like, "That's not a manga," and I was like, "All right." And I never forget you, Felipe, for pointing out <laughs> if you're still even listening and watching. Oh, we but hope that you are. Yeah, we should. Yeah, but uh, that was like a month three thing we were going to do and then it just never happened until now until when you guys watch it which i know you did even though you're like yeah you tune in for I mean, the if North you Summer. haven't go yeah watch th- yeah if you haven't go ahead and, and go watch it and go watch sakamoto days we're recording this before um the uh now and then here and there episode drops and um you know it, you know sakamoto days fantastic series um <laughs> with uh not so fantastic views uh, so. you know it's one of those things where it's like yeah i mean when you when you do a one piece that has like decades or i assume yeah 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 maybe i didn't i didn't count no like it's a, a, yeah. a fan base and yeah. it's like you do something that's new you're like completely understandable but when you get the the that when youtube tells you like yeah, less of your viewers watched <laughs> Yeah, YouTube this. really told us that. We were like, wow. It's like, I don't remember it doing those little I paragraphs. Don't you, I don't remember asking you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you like, we what? can see the gray. Yeah, we can and we're see like, it. we know. But YouTube will be like, I don't know if you're doing something. <laughs> I don't know, man. We take it day by day. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know what? Just if you really want to help us out, you can just uh, go back, pop that episode on. It's a good episode. Just click um, on it. Take a shower. Do what you got to do. <laughs> And uh, check out the uh, Now and Then Here and uh, There episode if you haven't already. Yes. Um, Volume 1, Chunk, can you hit us with the final comment? It happened. (laughs) Please. This one comes from Eric Romero. Where did you get that Griffith mask in Dragon Slayer? Thank you for asking. Um, Where did you get that? Where did you get it? Volume 1, Chunk, thank you for pulling that comment up. Um, So I actually made... The Griffith helmet what? and um, uh, yeah, the Dragon Slayer sword. Yeah. You're just gonna tell people that? I'm just kidding. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I actually, sorry, I forged them. Um, ah. And ah. you know, it's something that I love to do, and it's something that you know, Berserk. Funny enough, had really reignited in me, and we've kind of talked about it in some previous episodes. But it's something that I love to do. I did it for the One Piece uh, episode. I made the Gomu Gomu no Mi fruit from. Uh, the series just for the thumbnail and it was a lot of fun to do it, I, and it's something I love doing one of the funniest things that people don't get to know is you put your Griffith helmet which is amazing and you put the Luffy straw hat on it and it's yeah. just out of frame and for, it's like probably yeah. like one of the best like things that you've done <laughs> and how it's just no one gets to see it yeah, at all it's for me but I see it constantly like that's yeah. really good for the sake of the viewers um, I will insert a picture of it Right here. Oh my God. We're, oh, wow. Oh, looks pretty cool. Popped huh? up. Yeah, it looks really cool. Uh, I like it. And I like, yeah. And it's something that I would love to, you know, as as we grow, I would love to be able to to film these builds for anybody who like wants to make these things for themselves, for cosplay just to have. Uh, Josh, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't you have a, a building video for a certain mask that's available on our <laughs> I, Patreon oh, exclusive I channel? I do, Cody. Is it? Wow, that what? is. He does. I do, actually. As a matter of fact, if you do, if you would like to support us on Patreon, um, which you could do by going to patreon.com slash one pod, there's a each week there is a there's a video on there. I I made uh, I showed how I made the Fujita mask from the Doro Hidoro episode. I actually filmed myself making the the devil fruit as well, and I didn't film myself making the sword or the helmet because and the real reason is because I didn't believe I was going to be able to do it. I was like, I, I, because it's it's very hard, and it's I, like someone didn't believe it. Exactly. Oh yeah. Um, Naruto. He and um, so as as we grow and as as we continue um, to to you know evolve and do and try new things on this channel, like I would love to start experimenting with um, with bi- these sort of build videos. If if there's any interest for it. I'm just putting that out. I remember we were we were going to have a bet before an event was canceled. Oh yeah, and like yeah. my punishment was going to be giving away my volume one of Chainsaw Man at and the time when you couldn't get a volume. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And your punishment was going to be I smash your Griffith helmet, which I didn't want to do. And I didn't want to destroy your chainsaw, but it, but it would have hurt us both, and that's a motivating bet. Yeah, mm. and thank God that event was canceled um, because we probably would have both lost <laughs> <laughs> things that we really care about. Um, yeah, so let us know. And, and also, you know, 
you know, you know, your support, by the way, and, and we're going to get to thanking our wonderful, beautiful, amazing uh, Patreon members, but your support, by the way, allows us to do cool stuff like that. So I want to thank you guys too, because, you know, Patreon money helps with like, you know, getting my gym membership. Mm -hmm. Like if you're watching the video, you can see it's really paying off. Yeah. yeah, and, Folks, um, this body does not pay for itself. Mm -mm. And it allows us to do fun stuff for the thumbnails. It allows us to maybe take a little bit of extra time to research and and, and, you know, I just really want to say thanks to everybody who is supporting us on there. And I'm going to give you a proper thanks in a minute. But I also want to just say to anybody who's on the fence or anybody who, who's ever really even thought about it, like it would mean the world to us. And it would, you know, everything that we um, receive will be put back into the show in some form or another, even if it's just to allow us more time to to read and to research and to, you know, just to make this more fun to listen to and watch. Yeah. Beach. And speaking of those Patreon members, thank you, <laughs> our wonderful, beautiful, Whoa. amazing, strong Whoa. Patreon members. You're our stars. You guys Damn. are our stars, our shining stars. You guys are our north stars. When we're in the dark, we look up in the sky and we see you guys and you lead us. You guys. I look us everywhere, like, north, south, east, east west. west. Doesn't matter. I mm, see love. You I take the you. pressure off oh, our yeah. uh, off our points. Uh -huh. oh, oh yeah. And I just want to point out, yes, point you guys out. are very. Pointed beautiful. Out. You and are you beautiful. are this you manga are is already mm -hmm. read. Mm -hmm. huh? You are already you're already dead. This manga uh, is okay. Uh, okay. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Oh right, 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 right. We got yeah. it. We got it. Yeah, it was a str I'll admit it was yeah. a stretch. It was yeah. a stretch, but I mean if you explained it, it's okay. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's and okay. thank you. No, thank okay. you. Your support does mean the world. Thank you guys you are, are so amazing much, and we really you're appreciate welcome. it from the bottom of our hearts. And we appreciate everybody who's watching, everybody who's listening, no matter how you choose to show your support, even if it's by being a part of the algorithm gang, commenting on this video, liking the videos, um, subscribe to the channel. Anything that you do to show your support um, means the world to us. You guys are amazing. You guys are the best. And speaking of liking things and speaking of leaving likes on videos, you guys did it. You freaking did it. Mm. Oh, and, wow. And, I know you guys. Yeah. And one piece of volume done piece is a coming. It's so funny. Confirmed. And remembering yeah. that I set the number being like, that we astronomically. Won't, yeah, we won't get that. We won't get that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it looks like we're devoting the next couple of weeks to one. <laughs> yeah. And I'm excited. And hopefully you guys are excited too. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, also remember, and that episode is going to be coming out Saturday and our live show is going to be that Sunday. So we got a gonna, busy week, man. If you guys are watching and if you guys stayed to this part of the video, we got a fun, awesome week planned. Woo! But thank you. Next time. It will be a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> and so we got to, you know, we got to get our numbers up. Get it um, up. Yeah, get it up. Something <laughs> I've never had up. trouble with. And, okay. Um, and that's going to do it for another Josh episode of Volume 1. Dysfunction nope, Michaels. that's going to do it for another oh. episode of Volume 1. Thank you as mm. always for watching and listening. The only thing left to do now is to get out of here on our outro that is always the same and never, ever, ever changes, which today, Megan, is going to be. Fist of the North Star, more like don't go too far and read this manga. Ken, more like can you be my husband? <laughs> better, better. Apocalypse, more like this one. I think it was the eye patch that go, made it. Go, go, go. Apocalypse, more like go get this manga. Ooh, wow. How about like can can you kiss my apocalypse? <gasps> can <gasps> apocalypse? Oh, that was really good. <laughs> Well, Megan's so excited. I guess, really <laughs> Cody doesn't it. like it, but it's good. No, I, yeah, no, it's it's a good. I just I just Co wanted it to be Cody, said do you have Something better? Do you have I'm something? sorry. Well, the thing is, Josh. No, I don't have anything better. Yeah. So we have to do it. Can, can you kiss can you? Can you kiss these apocalypse? <laughs> I like that. One. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. <laughs> and until next time, can, can you kiss, kiss these, these apocalypse? apocalypse? Yeah, boy. Yes, can. Can. Oh my god. Uh, there we go. That was really good. Thank you. Thank you. Really working. Uh, um, you guys want to? Uh, Josh, unfortunately, you have to go back. Eating. <laughs> oh yeah, I gotta eat a lot. I get to eat a lot so I can get my former form. Yeah. <laughs>